It's go time. It's Gigi no Re time. Uh, we do have a thing that we have to take care of. It's a little bit of housekeeping. Attention non-gamers. If you're not a gamer, please open up your podcast device. Uh, go to the episode show page itself and click the little ellipse. And then when the menu pops up, click unsubscribe. And then... <laughs> Click the ellipse again, and when the menu pops up, click delete from library, confirm it when it prompts you, and then close your podcast app to make sure that nothing's playing in the background. And then go back to your miserable life. Yes. Okay. Thank and you. Check your phone. All right. It's just us gamers here now. <clears throat> we, uh, we did a little something different today, and we did last time. We apologize for this. If you enjoyed listening to our you know, two-hour-long games, we didn't do that again this week. Poss probably from just having a ton of people, which is a blessing, but it's also a curse. Just like life, like every opportunity also has an opportunity cost. That's economics. You, you learn so much from listening to Gigi No Re. Really, you're, you're lucky, dear listener. You're lucky, and we appreciate your listening to us. Today, we are going to talk about what happened. It's an after action report. It's not an actual play. It's a session report. We will have an after dark for the patrons, patreon.com slash gginori. If you want to hear our reflections and behind the scenes stuff where we let our hair down, or at least one of us lets it, his hair down, the, mm, the one that can. Uh, yep. And then talk two, about things two. more yeah, freely. Two, two. Oh yeah, two, two of us now. Yep. Yeah, kind of let the hair down. Uh, but this one is just the facts, man. We're just talking about the facts here. Get the hair up. But if you want to have a little fun, I'm gonna put my pistols up. I'll permit you to take down. to take the fun dial from zero to one. Ooh. I will permit that. One half. <laughs> so we had today seven players mm. in a DM. Our record, actually, our record is more than eight. It's true. But this shows you you can do five e with a ton of people. It's definitely possible, at least at low levels. At least at low levels. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it gets a little crazy. So last time, just listen to our previous episode. That's how you know what happened last time. Mm -hmm. We don't need to recount this. Mm -mm. This and, time, yeah. we knew because of Luna. Say hello, Luna's player, Jim. Hey, guys. How are you? Luna got some intel on Quintus, who has his own page in the Dungeon Academy directory there, if you check it out, if you care to look at his picture, which no one does. Well, I, I do all this work, but it's just for me and for the man upstairs. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, so talk to Quintus from another Chill, school. Because he's already gone to bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So, I'm doing Hall, a lot better these days. <laughs> Hall, less sleepy. <laughs> and Hall Vixen Fang. And so now we know that there is another forest in the Cedar Forest out in our big wilderness area in front of our dungeon, which we've still not gotten into. There is a forest, Cedar, and we heard that there were big roaches crawling on the what we presumed was the dryad tree there in the middle of the forest. So today... We've decanted, or at the end of last episode, we had decanted some, or distilled, what do you call it when you get oil out of something? Uh, extracted. Extracted. There extruded. Go. Extracted some cedar oil from some cedar branches and stuff that we'd cut down. And now the party ventured forth into the wilderness. We used a collar this time. Maybe we'll talk about how that worked. I thought it worked well, but we'll talk more about that in the after dark. But we let Jim be our collar today. Did you enjoy your time as collar, Jim? Was that what I was? Yeah. I mean, uh, you were the one making all the decisions, right? I felt like uh, felt like it always does. Um, fearless <laughs> leader, Luna, leading you into battle. Well, that's what happened. You guys, when you get into the forest, there's a, a path crawl or whatever, outside outdoor dungeon. So they do have to choose if they want to go into the wilderness, like just through the trees that have no paths, which is not wise. So they didn't do that. So there's roads. There's choices to make where, where you want to go. They ended up going straight to the tree. Fortunately. And then we entered gamer mode. So so we went right um, because that was the right path. And it was the right path. It was indeed the right path. We had path. our gamer goggles on from the start. Absolutely. Uh, nah. did one of you guys right have, is always the right way. Did one of you guys have Game Genie plugged in? Uh, always. <laughs> it was a Game Shark. <laughs> no, Action Replay. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay, oh, wow. hands up. Who actually used the Game Genie? Owned and used one? Me. One, yeah, two, me. Three, four. Okay, good. good. I, did, I only use it to have fun, though. On that Nintendo. Anyway, so there was a big tree with a bunch of cockroaches swarming around it and a big, huge cockroach on it. It looked like it was possibly doing one thing or another <laughs> thing, which was eating from the tree. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, what, what was the other thing? Who knows? Do it, do it. Uh, uh, memory fails at this point. Basically, you couldn't tell which end was which. That's, oh. Yeah, okay. Could have been eaten. 
could have been <laughs> something else. Not eating. That's right. On our on our PG podcast. Poo poo. So Ew. then we noticed that there were normal mundane roaches just covering this tree Average. from trunk to crown, and there were two other big roaches like the size of I don't know dogs or something that were you surrounding said man the big size the first man time. size man dogs well, the well dog, i mean if, man if, dog if the dogs are man size the dogs are man size uh, then it's dog size <laughs> yeah. it's man roach dogs yeah it's man size dog man size bear, the big bear. one is as big as a horse and the man ones are as big, big as, as a man man <laughs> dogs <laughs> The yeah. men's one. The men's no, ones no, are dog biggest size, dogs. M- men's size dogs. Yes, yeah, the roaches. So we started kicking with the force of punches and punching with the force of kicks. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, dear listener, let us know if you enjoy this format. I mean, we're not done yet, but we've never done. I don't think we've ever done an episode like this before. We've done episode recaps, but I don't know uh, if we've done like roundtable recaps. Wait, we have. Right yeah, we have that. Have we? Once or twice, probably. I only have a memory that goes back minus two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and I think it was universally panned, but, oh, uh, okay. you know, like a dog returning to, returning to, to its vomit. vomit. Yeah. Like a horse returning horse-sized to its vomit. vomit. <laughs> <laughs> like a horse returning to its cedar tree. Like a horse-sized cockroach returning like a, to its cedar tree. <laughs> <laughs> this is the recap. Like a roach-sized dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm getting get really confused. Are we talking Would like you rather fight <laughs> a horse-sized roach or a roach-sized roach horse? Size okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're, we're moving real fast through this. But, so, but like a man. So Jim, we are on Jim, track. Jim had a plan for us. Jim got us in line. He got the um, the Archer boys in back and the fighter boys in front, and then we had one guy run up to throw a vial of our cedar oil that we picked up. And our weapons Indeed. are oiled up. Yes, and they oiled up their weapons and arrows with cedar oil. And the plan worked. Anyway, we found out that these things have tough chitinous exoskeleton things. Real tough. Like uh, they basically bugs. chain. They're AC-16. Which these guys, Whoop. it's hard to hit for these guys. They're just learning. But they, imagined, uh, they managed to do it. When they threw the vial of cedar oil, it made the big horse-sized cockroach flip on its back to try to rub it off. And that exposed its soft underbelly which they then took advantage of expose him after this <laughs> the roaches dispersed from the tree scattered i chose my words very carefully <laughs> <laughs> and the dryad emerged and much as last time offered her thanks and her heart which did two things it gives them all plus one max hp mm. because remember we're not leveling up in dungeon academy so you have to improve your stats in other ways and then it also turned into a magic item that's reusable. It is a three-dose vial of magic cedar oil, which mm. is has several things you can do with it. It's extremely strong against vermin and insects. So she said that if they didn't go down and clear out the dungeon beneath her, which has more cockroaches in it, then her magic would cease to function later on. So their magic item wouldn't work after this time. So Priorities. Just, yeah. So they had to decide, do we go to the dungeon? Do we keep exploring the forest? Do we go clear out the pine forest dungeon that they hadn't fully cleared? And we voted to go down underneath the cedar tree. It was... <laughs> it's actually a very small dungeon. I did it with um, this program called Dungeon. D-U-N-G-E-N. And it's by one of the guys in the OSR scene. It's a very cool generator. So I just use that as the basis for these small mini dungeons. And then I go and elaborate on them as I have time. He's just making fun of me because I said it was endless. Yeah. <laughs> Mason's like, oh, this place seems so huge. I mean, he said that right before we found the And there's the like eight, eight rooms? No, there's just five rooms. Oh, there's five. Oh. Yeah, just five. But the way they're connected, it makes it seem... Yeah, the way he describes it and the way it seems like it's connected does make it feel large. And it's cool because it generates those connections. <laughs> it, it's like edges and nodes, right? So yeah. it generates like five nodes, which are the rooms, and then a certain number of And I paths. accidentally mapped it pretty well. Yeah, you did, actually. A, a mirror can make a room appear longer. And it does verticality really well, too. It's not just like boring one plane kind of stuff. There's lots of like going up and down, chasms and shafts and that kind of stuff. Anyway, highly recommended. So they managed to go and just completely SWAT team this dungeon. And they found all the, I mean, spoiler alert, they found all the loot in it. Oh, uh, dip. And I think we went down several times, like... Uh, Five yeah. people went down, I think. Yeah, I went like down once. Times. John went down once. I went down twice. Yeah, John went down twice. We, may, down twice. we may have gone down twice. Oh, I went I down. Went down twice. Oh, oh, by yeah. the way, your shot counter for how many you knocked out uh, resets every time you go down. 
So, <laughs> so I, I, I hit. I don't, I don't know if I that's hit, how that works. I hit more and took down more. Oh, and Luna for the first time. So because these uh, this campaign is set in a school. When you start playing, you're not as powerful as a normal level one character. Part of that is wizards have to make checks to cast even cantrips until they get more proficient in the spell. So if you fail, I have a system where you can roll your HD, subtract that much HP from yourself, and try again. It's like you're channeling more of your own energy into it. And Jim did that once successfully and again. And at zero HP, I let you try again. Actually, no, it took you to zero HP. That's what it was. And so he could have died from it, um, but, but he ended up living. No one ended up dying. Not even, the, not even the bugs he was attacking. Not even the bugs. We, we eventually, I, I think Menelaus, our, our thief, our rogue, you actually got some cool climbing action. I have a thing where I think thieves, rogues are underappreciated. They're kind of like, among all the classes that we usually pick, rogue is usually not there. For sure. I mean, last week... Last week, our, our rogues came in super handy. Yeah. So for things like climbing up like natural shafts and caves, I let him just do it pretty much by fiat. He just had to roll and not roll a natural one, uh, whereas everybody else, it would be extremely difficult or they need equipment, that kind of thing, just to make, make rogues a little special. I like that. Um, anyway, so he explored a lot, and they, they finally explored everything, and they got to, uh, they mapped it out, Mason mapped it out. And, oh, can someone take a picture of the, unless we've erased it already? Erased. Oh, Sam. Uh, so ephemeral. You hate to see it. The grass withers. Anyway. I can replicate it. So we finally found, like, the boss area at, in this big uh, cracked area where there's a chasm behind it, and there was a queen and four of the baddies, like the, the, the dog man-sized cockroaches. And it was a big, it was a big fight. Uh, it looked like it was going to go bad. They were encroaching in the, the 10 foot tunnel that they had come down out of. And at the moment when things appeared hopeless, Adolphus, one of our new players, Ben, <laughs> he pulled out a desperate move. Oh, yeah, this was amazing. They had, they had previously collected three spell scrolls. They did not know what they did. They got them in this dungeon in one of the treasure rooms. And so Ben decided just to blind cast it and see what happened. And it ended up being enlarged insect, which I, I'd stacked all these before. I knew like what, what spells they were, and, but it was random which one of the three it was on the spell scroll. So it was enlarged insect. So it made the, uh, the insect that he cast it on basically fill up the entirety of the tunnel and seal them off from most of the mobs. So they were able to take out the one that was in there with them, to take out the big guy. And then they eventually stuck to the tactics of getting the two tanks in the front, dodging, and just focusing fire until everyone was dead. After that, they found the spell book with a bunch of cool insect spells, and they found lots of good treasure and had an overall successful night. And we, we retired to um, take up a bunch of um, just wrap-up stuff that we do at the end. We have a bunch of weird systems. Maybe we'll post on that uh, on our blog about how they can cultivate. It's like a it's like a Dark Souls game where you've got certain NPCs at your hub that can do certain things for you, like a smith and a wizard and this kind of thing. Um, so after that, we were done. And so the next time we pick up, we'll probably record the actual play next time. I bet that's what we'll do. And it will start in the school with the feast where the winners will be feted and the losers will be embarrassed mm -hmm. and spend all the time in their room sulking and listening to emo, just watching reruns of SpongeBob <laughs> until 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. Uh, you know, this specific. is often particular. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is very specific. specific. <laughs> very specific. So uh, that's, I, I was I, I realized that I was a wizard uh, about three quarters of the way through this. Yeah, Asa had been playing with like no it was class after three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> it was when we got back, literally at the end. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm a You're wizard. Like, oh, 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 huh. heck, I'm a wizard. Yeah, Asa has no class. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he said to the surprise of no one. Uh, I mean, you played the whole episode as uh, classless. Yeah. yeah. I don't amazing. know. I, hey, but here's the thing: I was dropping them left and right, my dude. <laughs> my dude. Oh yeah, you've got your magic crossbow. Oh, roll oh. the roll the d6 to see if it loses oh, some yeah. of its moon, moonshine. Oh, here we go. Hey, a little bit of actual play for you guys. Yeah, actual play. Two. So yes, I need to does. drop it by two. Drop it down to D4. All right. Yeah, there's a magic item called a crescent stone that did that. There's one of three kinds of crescent stones. Don't worry about it. We'll eventually post it. It was maybe a the, D8. Maybe the patrons will get it. I think it was a D8. So yeah. you're down to D6 now. How about okay. that? Yeah. Fair. Well, actually, I have a D5. Tough, but fair. It doesn't go down to D5. 
It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, 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 numerically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think that about sums it up. Sorry if you guys are just hankering after that actual play. We'll get you there. We'll get you there, dear listener. Until then, hang out. Check out our After Dark episode, which we will be recording right now. And uh, probably we, we might do a remote episode on a topic or a panel. We're getting better at the remote stuff. Yay. It used to be a big hassle for us, but we're overcoming our boomer tech issues. We're getting there. We're going into the 20th century. Yeah. I got a desk, so it makes it easier. See? Look at that. Everything is on the up and up. 2020, looking bright. Don't catch coronavirus. GG, no read.